Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and click the like button and it does help out my channel quite a bit and I enjoy doing these videos. I really do and um, my subscribers I have now are just so awesome. Yes and I'm so happy with them. So come join us. We'll be happy to uh, get together. Well this one is I don't know what you want to say shocking I guess let me move my camera over just a little bit I don't want to miss a thing here <laughs> okay it says fellow patriot don't be fooled World War three won't be fought between nations like the first two and definitely not between the USA and Russia they know the stakes and they're not stupid enough to risk everything but this could kickstart World War III. No matter how crazy Putin may try to act just to scare the West, he has so much to lose. He's the most powerful man in Russia, and he doesn't want to give that up. He'll never go as far as self-destruction. The small elite groups of trained fanatics are crazy enough to kickstart the next World War. And guess who's back in the news again? I need to find the date when this was posted, but it's ISIS. ISIS already set foot on American soil. The three jihadists arrested in Brooklyn for planning a bombing are part of the larger plot. Statement from the FBI suggests that there are ISIS members in every state of the Union just waiting for a sign. Let me see if I can get a date on this. No. All I get is clickbank bank click bank trusted and uh, padlock secure yeah okay an FBI New York man tried to join Isis oh my the part that the feds leave out is these fanatics plan something far worse and much more dangerous than 9-11 ISIS plots to put the entire American nation on our knees using a re revolutionary uh, weapon that could cripple the entire country. Make no mistake, ISIS isn't a rational actor like Russia. They have nothing to lose. After they decapitated Americans and set people on fire, they burned all the bridges. They either die or they destroy America. They can do it with brute military force. We're too powerful for that. But we're defenseless against a smart bomb that's a thousand times more damaging than nuclear devices. It's a weapon that can instantly end modern life in America by knocking out our power grid. I've read this, oh my goodness, what, two years ago? Three years ago? Nothing that has electronic components will ever work again. Cars won't start, TVs, phones, the internet will be dead. They're going to send us back to the Middle Ages. You'll have to make a fire to cook and use candles for light. Mm -mm -mm. In fact, just seconds after this calamity hits, all social structures will be reversed. The information I'm about to close will put you at the top of the food chain. There's nothing you and I can do to stop it. But there is an answer. And if you stick with me until the end of this presentation, you'll meet one weird professor who's undercovered a proven way to shield yourself, your loved ones, and even your community America, from America's morbid coming mayhem. But first, who am I to make this kind of dark prophecy? My name is Alec Deacon. I'm the author of the bestseller, Backyard Liberty, and editor of Survivalpedia.com. And that's survivopedia.com. S U R V I V O P E D I A dot com. I've published articles seen on shtfplan.com. And that's uppercase S H T F lowercase plan dot com. My family survivalplan.com. And of course, survivopedia. I spent almost two decades studying every last type of survival situation, and I'm specialized in rural and wilderness survival. I know everything there is to know about 
bugging out, farming, supply stacking, home protection, you name it. In the last couple of years, I've dedicated my time to help anyone to survive any kind of a disaster. But even more important, I'm a loving husband and a father and a devoted Christian. I spent most of my life to make sure that my family 100% secure no matter what. I want them to be safe and know exactly what to do in case of an emergency or if, God forbid, anything goes wrong. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I love to prepare for the worst. And each year I find myself more prepared, both in knowledge and materials. But not too long ago I realized I was prepping for the wrong things the entire time. What I discovered trashed all my years of experience in a heartbeat. It turned all my preps and knowledge into dust. It made me feel like a naive infant. I recently came across shocking news about an untold catastrophe set to wipe out our entire country. At first I thought it was just a conspiracy theory, but I was dead wrong and what I saw sent shivers down my spine. Here's what it's all about. ISIS found America's soft underbelly. If you want to take down an entire country without too much effort and without having any money or resources, all you have to do is destroy his power grid. Dr. Peter Pry, a former CIA officer, is the executive director of the Task Force of National Homeland Security and the director of the U.S. Nuclear Strategy Forum. He also served on the Congressional EMP Commission, Congressional uh, Strategic Strategic Posture Commission and the House Armed Services Committee. He warned us on air at a New York radio station. There is an intimate threat from ISIS to a national electric grid and not just to a single U.S. city. Outlining the threat, Pry told us about a leak U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's report divulged in March of 2014. The report, the report shows that coordinated terrorist attacks on just nine of the nation's 55,000 electrical power substations can provoke coast-to-coast -coast blackouts for up to 18 months. Pry explained the possibility of ISIS immediately hiring Mexican extremists such as the Knights Templar Drug Cartel, which last year successfully used guns and Molo Tov cocktails to attack numerous Mexican power stations, leaving 11 towns without electricity. Hmm. Pry continues. P-R-Y continues. Now those guys are just across our southern border. That means that ISIS don't, doesn't have to actually come to the United States on those U.S. passports. All they've got to do is contact the Knights Templar, wire these guys 10 million. I mean, they'll do anything for money and say, hey, go across that open U.S. border and take out the electric grid in Arizona or New Mexico or Minnesota or New York. Now, Minnesota is right above Iowa. So the entire nation, or the entire nation, so something like that could be arranged. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next week. And this is not a far-fetched scenario. It actually happened to our allies in the fight against terrorism. For example, in Yemen, on June 9, 2014, ISIS allies, Al-Qaeda, blacked out an entire country. 23 million people suffered for days without electricity. For the first time in history, a terrorist attack on the electric power grid has blacked out an entire nation. In this case, Yemen. Y-E-M-E-N. Yemen. On June 9th, Al-Qaeda and the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula. Pensasula, AQAP, Pensula, Pen, Pensula. Okay, I'm getting tired, people. <laughs> uh, use rocket propelled grenade launchers and motors to destroy transmission towers, plunging the whole country of Yemen into plummet blackout. The AQAP blacked out of Yemen's electric grid has gone largely unreported. And they've got a picture of it right here. While the media's attention was focused on the brutal conquest of northern Iraq, threats to take over Baghdad, ISIS decapitation videos, hostage situations and burning people alive, 
This much more destructive terrorist threat has been ignored. No, well, you shouldn't ignore it. And it's not a singular event. It happened over and over again. January 25 of 2015. Pakistan suffered a major blackout after rebel attack, leaving 140 million people in a complete darkness without any power for weeks. Radicals connected to the Taliban attacked critical transition lines and short-circuited the national electric grid, plunging the whole country into darkness. And there's more. In fact, there were three more attacks before that. The rebels attacked the electric grid three times since January 13 of 2015. Those aren't isolated incidents. They show a pattern. Those terrorists learned the easiest ways to cripple a country is destroying its power grid. And that's exactly what former Deputy Director of the CIA, Mike Morrell, says. ISIS has the capacity to carry out a 9-11 style attack, and they can use the Muslim fanatics who are already in the country. The consequences are beyond imagination. The Congressional Electromagnetic Pulse, EMP, Commission warned a nuclear sh scrud mis missile launched from freighter could black out the U.S. for a year or more, killing up to nine out of ten Americans by starvation and social toll collapse. What they don't say is that you don't need a missile. A nuclear bomb or a coronated attack on nine power substations to take out our entire power grid. Building a single EMP bomb is easy and cheap and has the same devastating to our power grid, according to Peter Pry. America may never recover from the EMP attack. Before telling you how easy it is to build an EMP bomb and how fragile our power grid is, let me explain what an EMP is. An EMP, or electrical magnetic pulse, is an electromagnetic discharge that fries sensitive circuits within minutes, even seconds. Most modern day appliances, the gadgets we use daily, and even the U.S. power grid all have sensitive circuit buildings. Think of a normal blackout when you don't have any lights, heating, or internet. Only an EMP blackout is permanent and on a larger scale. This means you can also say goodbye to telecommunications, transportation, and even utilities like water. That's why the CIA fears the EMP bomb might send us back to the Middle Ages and they fear that it will happen this year. Boy, i got to find a date on this article. <clears throat> we would basically be sent back to the Dark Ages because we're so accustomed to have everything at our fingertips. Electricity is like the heart of a human body, and when it stops pumping, everything shuts down. Boy, ain't that the truth? Your TV, laptop, fridge, your oven, cell phones, kitchen appliances, and the radio will be useless. GPS, navigation, banking, and transportation, all utilities include gas, electricity, and water, would cease to work anymore. Power outages would be followed by nationwide blackouts, radio silence, and satellite, satellite breakdowns, leaving the world in total chaos. Imagine not having any electricity for days, weeks, months, or even years. No lights, no communication channels, no water, no refrigeration, no navigation systems, no gas pumping, no food transportation, no waste pumping, or garbage collecting. <clears throat> No one in our country can survive something like this. During an EMP, civilization will be sent back to the Middle Ages and most people won't be able to cope. Imagine the smartphone generation forced to live like cavemen. The worst part is, our power grid is America's weak spot. Before I explain how easy it is to build an EMP bomb, you first need to realize how fragile our power grid is. People are panicking when the stock and bond system was downgraded to an A. Minus. Imagine what would happen if people only knew our nation's power grid is rated A, D+. Plus. The CIA knows that while they shiver at the thought of the MP attack, America relies on electric grid based on 1880s systems. In the 1800s. 1880s systems. It's so bad. It could give out at any moment without an EMP attack. In 2011 alone, there were 3,071 blackouts in the U.S. 
That amounts to 85 days of blackouts, while the average duration of a blackout is three and a half hours. Just think of how often the power goes out in California or New York, and that's without the EMP. So in just a few years, the power grid might be overwhelmed by national demands. Well, that's true. And here's the really scary part. This may sound unbelievable, but building an EMP device is not expensive or difficult. And it shows a picture of a young kid. And he can build one? He only look like he's about 13, 14 years old, maybe. Maybe even younger than that. Huh. Small EMP device that fries your cell phone can be built with just a few bucks. Some batteries and spare parts you can find in a camera. Even 12 years old. Well, I got him about right, didn't I? Build EMP devices for science projects. There's no need for fancy technologies or billion dollar investments to make it. And all it takes is not a hundred, not even fifty, but just one warhead to be detonated above the U.S. Hemp stands at high attitude electromagnetic pulse. It's an EMP device that can be strategically detonated at an altitude of 20 miles above the surface of our country that will permanently cripple our power grid. And let's face it, the U.S. hasn't exactly been making friends over the past decade. North Korea, Iran, Russia, Afghanistan, and China. Oh dear God. All the enemies we've been making back since World War II have the power to detonate and hemp over U.S. soil. And as if EMPs aren't easy enough to build, any kind of warhead can be easily bought on the black market, especially in hemp, H-E-M-P, device. In fact, these enemy countries will gladly give this weapon to a terrorist organization like ISIS. They rip all the rewards of crushing the U.S. without any risk. Hmm. Makes me want to think about Biden and his son being involved in China so deep. Hmm. Oh boy. And Biden's trying to break the United States? Selling our farmland to China? He wants China to take over the United States? Well, pieces of puzzles are coming together, aren't they? Yep, pieces of puzzles are coming together. However, the real danger of the EMP is it could happen without any signs or warnings. Unlike an economic collapse that's more like boiling a frog, when we would finally figure out that the EMP has struck, it would be too late. They've got all kinds of pictures on this site. Just imagine you're heading to the kitchen to have breakfast. Usually you hear noise on the background. TV, radio, anything. But today, there's a deadly silence. And you felt something's a bit off. You go to the kitchen, your wife tells you she can't cook breakfast because there's no power. You then notice there's no lights. Probably just a normal blackout. You pour a bowl of cereal and start eating it. You're halfway through your breakfast, but then you notice your neighbors gathered outside in one big, disoriented crowd. Probably the blackout affected most of the neighborhood. That's when one of your kids come over to complain that the cell phone doesn't work. You explain that it can't be charged because of the blackout. But you check your phone, it doesn't work either. Maybe this isn't just a plain blackout. So you go outside and talk to your neighbors. All of them experience the same crazy stuff as you did. One of them has a radio. You can hear something. There's been an EMP attack. No invasion, but the power grid is down indefinitely. This will be the last time you'll see your neighbors like this. You know you're prepared for anything, but the possibility of an EMP attack never occurred to you. This is not a drill. It's the real thing. Week later, you're knee-deep in hell. You now realize that you're underprepared at best. Your food, your water supply are almost gone, and you're freezing. Most of the food is rotten, and the kids are scared and cold. 
You managed to protect your home so far, but in the last couple of days, riots have started. People are starting to turn, to turn on each other. They went from civil to psychotic in just a few moments. They're desperate. They need food, and you still have some. Across the street, you see fire spreading on your next door neighbor's lawn. Looters are ruin, running the streets of your once peaceful neighborhood. You haven't seen any of your neighbors in weeks. You might have to leave your home if you want to survive. You heard rumors about people being shipped off to FEMA camps. But that's not the place for you. Soup lines for your entire family? Is that what it comes down to? One of your kids has a fever. The antibiotics doesn't seem to work that much. What should you do? And this is just the first few weeks. It'll take years to restore the grid. You may think the government's going to step in and it'll all get better, but it gets even worse. An event so catastrophic will trigger a number of death waves. The first people will die right after the MP. The elderly and the people on life support. Even though hospitals have backup generators, they'll be fried by the EMP. The chronic ill are wiped out next. Without hospitals or pharmacies being able to function, people won't be able to take their necessary medications. Just think about it. If you're a diabetic, you might need insulin. Even if you have a large enough stash to last, you throughout the entire collapse, insulin needs to be kept in low temperatures. And with your fridge out of commission, your stockpile of insulin will become useless in the blink of an eye. All your other medications that are heat sensitive will suffer the same fate. The third waves of death would be triggered by poor sanitation. Because by no waste pumping, garbage collecting, and by the first death waves that obviously would create massive hygiene problems to the unprepared, triggering a massive pandemic. And the last death wave will be caused by desperate looters. They will prey on the weak and vulnerable. How do I know this? Americans riot just because their basketball team didn't win or because of some self-perceived injustice. Can you imagine what would happen during an EMP when all the power is out? Just remember what happened during Katrina or the London riots or during Hurricane Sandy. And that's not nearly the worst of it all. The CIA director James Woolsey, Woolsey, W-O-O-L-S-E-Y, apostrophe S, Woolsey's public conversation with Republican Senator Ted Cruz lead to the shocking realization that nine out of ten Americans will be dead by the end of the first year. Our government has been using EMP protection within the military and its continuity planned since the Cold War. The President and his men are well protected against the EMP, including when traveling in Air Force One. However, you and your loved ones, things you depend on to live, are not protected. The Obama administration list of priorities obviously won't admit EMP threats. Former Speaker of the House Representatives, Newt Gingrich, has been trying to expose this threat and our vulnerability for the last couple of years. Most of his efforts went in vain. They were in vain. EMP is one of the deadliest threats known to man. You and your family and your loved ones and our entire nation could be wiped out in a matter of seconds and no one's doing anything about it. Hmm. What's Biden doing? And his son. And they're getting millions and millions of dollars all the time. Mm -mm. Most solutions you'll find on EMPs are just fantasy novels that fail to discuss real answers. They paint a pretty vivid picture of what's going to happen, but so do all the documentaries on EMPs that are out there. On the other hand, there's a bunch of armchair survivalist courses with stupid ideas, like put all your appliances inside a big Faraday cage. But how's that going to help? Things like your iPhone, for instance, will be completely worthless when all the communication networks are down. And of course, you can always wait for the government to fix the grid, the government to fix the grid. But good luck with that. At the moment, they're not doing anything. Everybody's known about the grid's vulnerability, 
vulnerability, vulnerability for decades. We've known of an EMP threat ever since the early 60s. That's 10 different administrations sleeping on it, and this one doesn't even care that the power grid is rated a D plus? Why? Probably because they won't get any new votes by fixing the grid. They're spending trillions on Obamacare and not a dime on the power grid. That's why I'm telling you all of this. You have to put yourself and your family first, because nobody else will. That's why you need to start preparing for an EMP now. But the solutions I found left me frustrated. When I realized what my options were, my options were I absolutely, I was absolutely horrified. I was outraged nobody's doing anything about it. And when I found out that the White House is prepared for an EMP themselves, but nothing is done to protect us, the American citizens, I lost it. I don't doubt he didn't. So finally I decided to find my own answers. I spent hours in the library reading books, I watched all the documentaries and the interviews I could find. I looked for courses, I talked to all the survival experts I know. I even tried contacting NASA, but I got nothing. Lucky for me, my life was about to change. I almost gave up after spending months poring over research to prepare for an hemp attack. That's H-E-M-P attack. Most information was useless. I had nowhere else to go, but I was about to throw in the towel. But somehow I couldn't. I thought my, of my kid and the picture of him living in a dark age was unbearable. I couldn't just give up. He deserves better than that. My last hope was a peculiar professor I found online, Charles Green. He's an ex-college professor, physicist, and a prepper and he's fully aware of the likelihood of an EMP. He knows the devastating consequences compared to a massive hurricane or even an economic meltdown. That's why he became so obsessed with surviving the EMP threat that he took a two-year sabbatical to live in an Amish community. Let me explain the Amish are a very unusual religious community. Modern life comfort is irrelevant to them. Yes, it is. Yeah. They live in simpler lives, maintain traditions that go over 300 years. They grow their own food for their families. They barely use any electricity, and they do it off-grid. They do this because the religion forbids them to. However, it's their choice, and they prefer a life with no distractions. You see, Charles' obsession drove him to a small Amish community in Pennsylvania. He had only one goal, learn to survive and build a community in a post-EMP world. And the Amish are the closest thing to that. Yes, they are. Unfortunately, there's no audio or video recordings of Charles' experiences because the Amish forbid the use of modern gadgets. So the only recordings are notes Charles took. In his notes, Charles described in vivid detail the Amish way of life. He discovered plenty of ways to keep your food from spoiling without fridge and secret Amish used to store heat-sensitive medicine and surprising places where you can find drinkable water uh, enough to sustain your family for months, even if you live in an arid region, A-R-I-D, region. Every time I talk, I, every talk I had with Charles was eye-opening. I never came across anyone so intelligent, knowledgeable, and devoted to the study of EMP survival. He told me virtually all of us, and this includes seniors and kids, can survive without electricity. The only condition is they need to know what to do when the power goes out. Sure, it wouldn't be a luxurious life or even a comfortable life at first, but your family, your loved ones, and even your entire community can stay alive. I was completely humbled by what Charles was showing me. I thought I knew everything about survival when in fact I was just barely scratching the surface. Here's the good news. Now this is very long. This is going to be a very long video. <clears throat> and I'm sorry about that, but... This is very important, because what would we do if this was to happen? And the way Biden has pushed this deal and all them countries against us, you got to think, really. Charles showed me secret, few preppers, survival experts, or even people from the military know. In fact, there are many things you can do right that will do wonders for you and your family. I was so amazed and thankful for what Charles taught me. I realized that this information had to be available to every family out there. 
It took some convincing. Actually, I begged and nagged him for weeks. And finally he agreed to put all his hard-earned secrets into a special program. His only conditions were to remain anonymous to make this available for as many people as possible. We created one kind of a course on how to survive the EMP. It doesn't matter whether it's a hemp bomb or simply power outage. You'll be provided with everything to be 100% prepared. Plus, if you're covered for an EMP, you're covered for virtually any disaster. Why? Because a permanent blackout is one of the toughest survival situations you'll face. In fact, the EMT creates this domino effect that triggers multiple disasters at the same time. <clears throat> Excuse me. A food shortage, an economic collapse, and mass pandemics are inevitable. Inevitable. And Charles, one of the kind package darkest days, how to survive an EMP attack to the grid, actually shows you how to survive all these disasters at once. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I'm getting hoarse. Uh, this program is called The Darkest Days, and uh, this man here that started this program uh, took the lessons he had learned, situations he had learned, what to do with the situations when they fail to survive, and put it in a book. Now, I would... Um, not go through any more of this. This is so long. It is so very, very long. But um, I would just read this article. Um, it's, it's got everything in it. It's got FEMA in it. Uh, the government's in it. Uh, DHS is in it. The, of course, the United States power grid. Countries that don't that are against us. The United States. It, it's all something to read and something to look at. And uh, Yeah, it's all listed here. Yeah. How to make your own pharmacy from herbs, seeds, flowers. Yeah, it's all here. I'm not going to read any more of this because it's way too long and I'm 32 minutes now into this. And this is my last video for uh, tonight. But uh, if you just want to... Uh, look at it <clears throat> and go over it um, the price on the book is $37 and you know if that's the way you want to go to read it um, but they sure got it there's so much information in this article goes on but it's worth reading it's worth your time so it'll probably take, well, I've been in it 30 minutes now. Of course, I had that other one. But, um, no, I didn't. I started out with this one, didn't I? I'm so tired, I can't remember. But anyway, it's worth it. But I don't know uh, where to tell you to go. Uh, the way I found it, let me go way back up here, was uh, I found it on the... YouTube channel come on take me back it's got a picture of Biden in front of the White House grinning with his teeth is showing uh, let me go back up here just a minute hang on I would buy the book I really would if I had the money I sure would buy it just to pass it on to my kids, my grandkids, and my great-grandchildren. Yes, because I think it would be a, it would be a keepsake. Oh, i got to go way back up in there. I can't believe I read all that. No wonder I'm getting hoarse, <laughs> coughing. <clears throat> and I'm just getting over that uh, change of the seasons cold. Now, I'm not really uh, healed up from that yet. It takes, it takes a couple weeks or so. But the way it starts out, it, it comes up as click bank, and it's a trusted, secure, with a padlock. So I don't know if that's the site you'd go to, but the title is Blackout USA. And then this title is, This Could Kickstart World War III. And they're talking about the, the grid. Now, I read before... Um, 
was it last, I think it was last month, early in the month, that the grid was very weak for us. Very weak. It wouldn't take much. Mm -mm. No, it wouldn't for it to just go out. And where would we be? All right. So it's click bank. C-L-I-C-K-B-A-N-K. And the click is, uh, I think if you just put click bank, it's uh, thicker letters, uppercase letters and click. And then B is uppercase in bank. A-N-K is lowercase. And then it's got trusted, padlock, secure. The title is, this could kickstart World War III. And it starts out as fellow patriot. Now, I wish that I knew how to do some stuff where I could put this on my video. But I don't know how to do the links to get it in my video. Nobody is, uh, I don't have him. <clears throat> I don't have anybody to help me except, you know, Walter's the one that got me started, Walter Weyburn. And uh, I miss him because he sure did help me out. That got me started. But I sure could ask him some questions. <laughs> what can I do to fix this? <laughs> but anyway, well, I hope that uh, you write all this down. And if you get the chance, I would recommend you buy the book. Yes. And uh, we have Amish people around here in Iowa. Pennsylvania is, is uh, loaded, you know, from Amish people living there, making their homes there. They're awesome, awesome people. Yeah, in uh, Indiana, there's Amish. They're, they're just about all over. Yes, and they're just... Oh, I love watching their recipes. Yes, I do. I get some of their recipes off the internet. Yeah. Okay, folks, it's 37 minutes here. And I don't know. I did a longer video the other night, and it got stuck in uh, processing, and it didn't move, and I had to redo the whole thing. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. But anyway, God love you. Okay, I'm going to put my little mouse right here on my video camera. And I'm going to say, God bless you. I will see you later t uh, today, later on today. It's 3.18 a.m. my time now, and I'm very tired. So God bless you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I would start wearing a mask with this cold weather coming. Don't leave home without a mask on. It's just a little, little idea. You know, just stay safe. Stay healthy. And God bless you. And you are a blessing. Laters.